All right, everybody. So I hope everyone's doing well and is happy and healthy. Uh, I'm doing this video here for Stevens 304 RC, uh, aka 304 RC. You might see some decals on some of my trucks, some of my videos that have the 304 RC. He's a friend. Uh, RC compadre, him and his son. I've been helping them out here and there with some RC stuff. You guys can check them out on here on YouTube at three Stevens three hundred four RC is their YouTube. Excuse me. I will put a link to one of their videos down here in the video description box. Uh, he has acquired a, a Trail Finder 3 from another friend. This truck's compadre. Uh, notice I finally cleaned this thing up a little bit. <laughs> uh, I did it for this video. So, we're going to be talking about, this video might get a little long. I don't know if a lot of people want to stay for it, or we're just going to go, I'm going to go over for him the... Basically, TF3, TF2, uh, the HG P407, and like the Tamaya, the Tam the Tamaya, whatever, Hilux, the, you know, Bruiser Mountaineer stuff, you know, um, and just a little bit of differences and stuff like that that you can, you know, some stuff that works, some stuff that doesn't work, just some stuff that I've learned over the years. I am no, you know, guru at this or anything like that. Uh, I have learned some things over the years, and I don't mind sharing knowledge, general knowledge with stuff. Uh, help him out, and to get him going along the correct path with, uh, you know, with his new scale truck and stuff. So, I just wanted to do a video. He kind of asked me to a little bit. Um, well, I, I don't know I can do a video. He said, yeah, that'd be nice. So, that's why I'm doing this. Just, uh, this video right here is mainly for that. But if anybody else wants to kind of sit in and listen for some, you know, information and just general knowledge that I do know. Some of the stuff you guys might want to double check me on because it's been a while since I've, I've messed with any of the Tamiya stuff, Tamiya, however you say it, however they're saying it nowadays. Um, I just stick with the RC full-wheel drive stuff. Uh, I do want to get my hands on one of the HGP407, the clones, which is the clone of the Tamiya Hilux truck. Uh, like the of the Mountaineer or the Bruiser or whatever. Uh, I do want to get my hands on one of those and do a scale build on it. Uh, just because I want to do it. It's something different. So I'm going to shut this off. Um, we're gonna, I'm going to zoom in and we're going to talk about the TF3 and the TF2 before we get into too much stuff. That way he has that information quickly. Alright, so first off the bat, we have the TF3 and we have the Trail Finder 2. Now, the TF2 and the TF3, you have the TF3. The chassis layout is completely, basically different <laughs> from the TF2 and the TF3. The TF3 has a super to scale to this model Toyota pickup truck, which is the Toyota Hilux. Uh, chassis. If you pull up pictures of the Toyota Hilux chassis, this looks like the Hilux. The chassis does on the TF3. It is more to scale. I'm sorry, it's the truth. I know people get mad about that stuff. I don't really care. It's more to, true to scale the chassis is than the TF2 chassis. Uh, and if you're a scale guy, those that should matter. Uh, that's just right off the bat. Uh, and this isn't bragging about the TF3 video versus the TF2. I love both the trucks. I got room in my heart for all of them. I'm not stingy. Um, so right off the bat, you got a more scale chassis. But this chassis, we'll just dive into a little bit. I don't want to get too confusing for you. The TF3 and the Bruiser chassis are a lot alike. As, long as, as, as well as the HG uh, P407. Uh, they're, they're the they're well the HEP four hundred seven is a, almost you know pretty much just a clone replica of the um t you know Tamiya truck so um but this is the the TF three chassis is more designed more along the layouts as those two trucks um 
not the same, just designed more similar to that to that style uh, truck. So I know you, he was getting a, having a little bit of confusion with the body stuff. So we're gonna we're gonna talk about that now. So the differences is the TF2 chassis and the TF3 chassis. Uh, other than that, they are the same axles. They're Yoda two axles. Um, the only way you're going to have anything different in the axles is if you have the Yoda 1s or somebody else has put something else in it. Your truck is not. It came from a friend. It has the Yoda 2s. Uh, so all of like the, the axles, the drive shafts, uh, those all interchange between the TF2 and the TF3. So if you're looking at drive shaft stuff and you're looking at uh, axle stuff, all the parts from the TF2 is going to interchange with your TF3. So, getting into now the bodies. Basically, anything that you find that says it's going to fit the Mojave is the same body from the TF2 Mojave as is on the TF3. It's the same body. There's no differences in them. They have the same mounting holes. Uh, they mount with the same distance mounting positions and all that stuff. You're not going to have to worry about, I can take this Marlin body off this Marlin, which is a TF2, and slap it right over to the TF3. Vice versa, the TF3 body onto the Marlin and the TF2. So you're not going to have to worry about any of that stuff. Uh, between As long as you're looking at the Mojave body. So when you're looking at like light kits and any of that kind of stuff, scale accessories... For the Mojave body, they're going to interchange between the two. So, now to dive in to make it a little more complicated. Okay, so we have, you have, this is the Marlin. I've got my homemade headlight covers on there. Uh, so you can't really see the headlights. And then this is the same Mojave body that you have on your TF3 because this is my TF3. Now you'll see the front, the front grill section and all that stuff's different than yours. Well... We're going to dive into that stuff. You'll also see my mirrors are different on my TF3 body here. Because I went the old school route with it. Uh, I like the old school look of the trucks better. That's just my opinion. It's what you like. Everybody likes something different. Like my buddy says, coffee and tea. Um, I tend to be coffee because I'm here in America. And I speak Americanese and eat American cheese. So we have... If you want the round headlights and you want a super easy swap over, you can get the Marlin front grille and you'll have the round headlights. But in my opinion, this is my opinion. That's all it is. Personal opinion. I think you what you see here of uh, this beautification is the Tamiya grill. This is something we did a long, long, long time ago when I had my original TF2. I had one of the original TF2s on one of the first ones that hit the hobby shop that had the Yoda 1 axles in it. And this was one of the first, last things I did to it right before I got rid of it is I swapped over to the, the Tamiya Hilux Bruiser. All that is all, if you see Mountaineer, Tamiya Mountaineer, Bruiser, Hilux, this is all the same grill right here, parts right here. That you can do to put the round headlights like this. Like the older trucks. The newer Hilux had the square headlights like you have. The older ones had the round headlights. And I have a soft spot for the round headlights. That's me though. Um, you know it's what you like. Coffee and tea. Like my buddy says. So. If you want a cheaper easier swap over. That you don't have to mess with too much on. And buy a bunch of different parts trees and stuff. Just get on there and buy a Marlin grill on eBay from one of the park guys, bam, slap it in, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, it's done, um, nothing wrong with the Marlin front end, I like mine too, it's, it's okay, uh, I just like the, the, the Tamiya, Tamiya, whatever, I like it, uh, you know, a lot better, uh, you can glue your Hilux Toyota emblems, I don't know if it'll pick it up there, uh, I got it glued into this grill, just the same as this one, this one has a spot in the grill. The Tamiya has a spot in the grill for your Tama to Toyota Hilux emblems. The Marlin does not, but I just kind of sanded down a, like a flat spot there and then just epoxied on the, to the Toyota badge into that grill. Um, but that's just an easy, quick way. Another thing you'll run into, the front fascia. You don't have the drop-down piece here if you go with the Marlin. Um, 
front grill. So uh, that's going to be a problem because they don't make any bumper mounts that are raised up for the TF3. Unfortunately, this is basically the bumper mount you're stuck with with the TF3. Uh, you can make it work if you do your research to find your bumper. Uh, let's see, what else can we get into here? So that's that'll cover the grill stuff. So the Tamiya parts, Tamiya, however you say it, they will swap in between your RC full drive Mojave and their body stuff. The cabs will work as well. I am oh, I am pretty sure that the cabs are the same. Uh, I have heard that something about the mounting position on the clones are different. That you have to drill some holes on the HG. Now, somebody that watches this, that actually takes the time to watch it, that has experience with the HG clones, I do not. Mate, you can tell me if I'm wrong. I don't know. I just read that somewhere. Um... I know Metal Gear RC, he has a HGP 407, uh, he's done a lot of work to and stuff, I used to follow that a lot, uh, he, he, he would probably know about the body mounting positions on the two trucks, uh, but I, I, I'm pretty sure you can use the cab from the Tamiya, Tamiya, whatever, over here on the RC full drive and bolt your RC full drive bed directly to the Tamiya cab. And here's the reason why. We'll just do this really quick. So you'll see these pretty little emblems right here on the side of my fenders that I have. Now, if you look at the Tamiya, whatever cabs, They'll have an indentured spot right here like the real Toyota pickups. That'll have like a like a raised up spot right here that's perfect for those emblems right here. So, uh, I have them on the Marlin and I have them on this. I just looked up pictures of the Hilux online. I took a little piece of sandpaper and I sanded me a little teeny tiny roughed up a spot right here. And I epoxied these things down and they do not come back off unless you want them to come off. And usually you end up bending or breaking them to get them off. Um... But that is the difference that I know for sure between the Tamiya cabs and uh, the Mojave cabs from RC Four Wheel Drive. Now, coming back over here into the front of this truck, when you put the Tamiya cab uh, grill, if you go that route, into your RC Four Wheel Drive, there'll be a teeniest, tiniest little gap over here in the corner that light might come through. Uh, it's just right here on the very corner. You can't see it now because I have filled it. Uh, I didn't like that little gap. And I just took my little bit of hot melt glue gun, just a little, because it's basically just liquid plastic. Squirty, squirty, no more lighty light come through. Problem solved. Uh, so you can run, the, you can run that, this, it's not just basically a direct swap over but you're going to have to buy the parts tree for the grill. You're going to have to buy the parts tree for the chrome bumper stuff. You're going to have to buy the lenses. You're going to have to buy all that stuff all comes separate. So you have to buy like three different uh, parts tree uh, items to run this grill. Now, if you're happy with the newer style square headlights, there's nothing wrong with those as well either because they made them in both. Um, I just like the old school, I, you know, and it was fitting for this truck, the old school look. Uh, so, then there's nothing wrong with the Marlin grill, like I stated before. I'll grab it and pull it up a little closer. We'll go ahead and do this on the video as well. Um, you can see I have the emblems on it too. Same way I did here. I just took a, you know, a thousand grit polish paper. And I just sanded this here a little bit. Just dry sanded it. Wiped it off with some alcohol. Epoxied them right down. Um... And it was just as simple as that. Do it to it. Like Pruitt used to do it, and it was over. So it's really easy to do that. Um, that's basically the differences uh, that I know of right off the bat. The beds are different uh, because the HGP 407 and the Tamiya Hilux and Bruiser and all that stuff, they don't got the full style, closer to full style bed like you have in the RC four wheel drive trucks. Uh, so that's, you know, I would definitely recommend keeping the RC four wheel drive bed, uh, no matter what you decide to do. Um, I'm going to pick me up the Tamiya cab and have one here, uh, just to have, because like I said, it does have that raised up spot because I eventually want to do another build on one of these trucks. 
I want to do a cool overlanding build on one of these uh, just because I can. So that's basically the grill stuff right there. And if you want the part numbers, man, hit me up. I will give you the part numbers to switch all that stuff over. Uh, I'm not really going to put that information out there uh, in the in the in the description. Uh, I'm just taking a break from doing all that stuff because it's a lot of work pulling all that stuff and adding it in there and everything, and I don't get anything from it. Uh, I don't. Most of the time, you don't even get a thank you from people. So, uh, if you want that stuff, I'll pull it for you, man. Uh, let's see. Same goes really for anybody else. You can hit me up on on Facebook or whatever if you're wanting them part numbers. I'll I'll I'll, I'll get them for you. Uh, this, I am running the, I think these are the bruiser mirrors that you see right here. These are the bruiser mirrors for the, uh, Tamiya. Uh, I think these actually might've been, these might've been the clone, clone mirrors. I think maybe, um, I bought these. I think these were the clone. They do come with your little reflective things come with it. They were cheap. They're like three or four bucks on eBay. Uh, pick these up. Because I wanted the old school style mirrors. I like the old school style mirrors. Somebody out there is even making the old school, the JDM style mirror. That goes out here that these trucks uh, in Japan. Um, they had the they had the mirror up here the on the like the fender or whatever spot. They're like a little teardrop mirror. I don't know what they call them. They, anyhow, they go. They're like a, you know, your import JDM stuff, whatever. Uh, mirror up here you can get you can find those two they're out there i was going to get a set and i never did um because you can actually do i seen a guy do a jdm build on one of these it's pretty sweet uh when it comes to the interior stuff um rc four wheel drive makes several different interiors you can get the full interior the tf2 interior i don't know i don't think it will, it might work on the TF3. You'd probably have to do some modifications to it. Um, the Tamiya interiors that you find should work on these with no problem at all because everything's pretty much located similar. Excuse me. So I think you've already got the simple seat and the dash. I would keep that. I mean, because you can just scale those out like I did this one. Um, would you watch that video already? Like you told me, excuse me. These are the tie down hooks that come with those trucks. I don't know if he put them on his, I can't remember, but you were asking me about how I strap stuff down. Uh, simple. I have scale ratchet straps. I also have made scale bungee cords. I can make you a few of them bungee cords. If you want me to, you can comment down in the video. Uh, if not, you'll have to pick up these. Unless you want to drill holes in your bed. I'm not a big fan of punching holes in my in my bodies. So these actually will work. Dura bonded down. Or a little bit of super glue to them. And they're there forever. Uh, and then you can just strap your stuff down. Stuff down just like you would a real pickup truck. Um, no difference than what you would in a pickup. Uh, if you see here. You'll see my Marlin. I'll grab it here. The Marlin is ratchet strapped. The ATV is ratchet strapped to the Marlin. Using... Using the hooks. And uh, that's what's holding that in there. Um, so, I think, I think that pretty much covers your body stuff and everything. Uh, but pretty much anything you're going to find, just stay away from the beds. Uh, so, pretty much anything you're going to find for the Mojave, the HGP 407, because the grill from the HGP 407, which they make a metal grill for the HGP 407, that should go right into this too, and it's a one piece. But that, in my opinion, would be a better go with the Trail Finder. Because if you get the Marlin, like I said, you're going to have this bottom balance piece is going to be gone. And it's going to be hard, because you can see the bumper mounts down here. And there's just no way, as far as I know, they don't make any other bumper mounts for the TF3. Now, I'm not saying I'm not wrong. Somebody else might see this and might know more than I. I have no idea. Uh, if they, if you do com please comment down below, but I haven't found any other bumper mount options. So you're either going to have to find a bumper. Uh, if you do, if you run the Marlin without your bumper here, cause it basically trims off right under there. You, you're going to want to fill that gap with something that's going to look kind of goofy in my opinion. Uh, you can see how my Marlin bumper is raised way up here. I sucked it way up. Um, I can't remember which one I got on that. Oh, I got the, 
I got the straight straight bumper mount on that one now. Uh, which this one's a straight bumper mount, but this one actually needs a bumper mount that turns up. Uh, if you're gonna do away with that to get to get your bumper to come up kind of level here, it, it depends on how picky you are. Uh, I'm pretty. I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I'm pretty picky. So that's the differences that I can tell you straight off the bat. Uh, best thing I can tell you is just research and research and research. I can answer as many questions as you need me to answer. Um, so I'm going to get this video too much, probably longer. Uh, let's see here. Um, any of this stuff that you can find though, man. Um, the TF3 comes with 90 millimeter shocks front and back. So these have a little bit, these already have the taller shock hoops on them. Uh, that's why when I talk about the TF3 come set up better, in my opinion, it's my opinion. Uh, after, and I've ran a lot of these trucks, so uh, I got pretty good grasp on how, how they work. Uh, my TF3 out of the box and my Marlin out of the box, the TF3 will beat the shit and five bucks and give me change back out of the Marlin. Um, just because it has a better weight distribution uh, on the truck. I'm not saying about the, I'm not saying weight down low. I'm saying this truck has a better front to rear weight ratio than the Marlin. And I'm just giving you facts, people. I mean, I know you can get pissy and get mad uh, all you want. Because I know guys watch those videos and, and they take offense to them. I'm just, uh, I don't know what to tell people. Um, when the truth hurts. And usually that's why people don't like the truth. They label you a bad person. So, I'm not getting into that right now because it'll be a big rant with me. Um... So, let's see, what else is, your TF3 has your scale shock U-bolts uh, for your leaf springs. Shouldn't have a problem with that. I've, like, once again, I beat this truck to death, uh, and I, I haven't had a single issue with the U-bolts. Uh, the U-bolts for the TF3 are, TF2 are different, so if you do break one of them, you're going to have to make sure you get the TF3 U-bolts, because the TF2 U-bolts are different. They are smaller. Uh, because of the shock clearance is not the same on the TF2 versus the TF3. Um, obviously, like I stated before, the transmission's different, the motor mount's different. Uh, all that, all that is completely different between the TF2 and the TF3, along with the chassis. So you're not, you might be. We were looking at being able to take an R3 and modify the chassis rail in this. To put the R3 in it. Uh, my buddy and I. I'm still looking into it. I don't know if he still is or not. Because we were wanting to run these trucks. RC Full Wheel Drive has decided that. Because everybody. You know. I'll post a little screenshot. Uh, thing in between this. Of the stupidity that goes on. On the. Just one of the RC Full Wheel Drive groups. And I will block out any of the crap. So nobody can see any names or anything. But uh, I, I blame the bullshit Facebook uh, group stuff, the groupy stuff. Uh, I call it the circle jerk uh, for a lot of the crap with this because all it takes is like one person crying about how they don't like the scale motor in it and they all become a bunch of crybaby bitches about stuff. Uh, sorry about the language in the video. Uh, it just it pisses me off. Um, I apologize, but it does it's just it really it really makes me mad seeing stuff in that group because those groups aren't about helping each other out anymore, unfortunately. Um and this is my opinion as well. I'm sure there's gonna be people watching this don't agree with it. But you know, those those dudes on there are just you know, they're there to just help their buddies out and kiss each other's own butt. So that's just how I feel about it, you know what I mean? Uh it's kinda sad really, to be honest with you. Um that most people I've, I don't know how many people I've talked to now they're like they don't even want to go on there anymore uh because you got that circle jerk with certain ones together and stuff and it's just it's just not it, you can't share on there and enjoy enjoy the uh enjoy the group anymore didn't used to be that way so now we went off on that little tangent of shittiness um we got and I just like I said I just I tell the truth people I don't care whether you like it or not so anyways we got that's the differences mainly between the two trucks. Uh, you know, you st I don't think you're going to have to worry about, if you're worried about being able to get parts for the TF3 man, uh, you could pick yourself up an extra set of their steel gears. 
for the transmission and the transfer case and put them back. Uh, the leaf springs are all interchangeable, so you're not going to have to worry about any of that stuff. Uh, the big thing is if you can't get the U-bolts anymore, you can straight bolt. You can straight bolt your leafs down to your Yoda 2 axles because they bolt down the same position. So if they do discontinue that, you're not going to have to worry about any of that stuff. The drive shafts are all interchangeable. The shocks are all interchangeable. You know, so the only thing you'd have to really necessarily worry about would be your transfer case and your transmission. And then, you know, the big, th this thing does have a big stupid scale motor in it that looks like a Cummins diesel. So that is one of the downfalls of the TF3. Uh, no big deal. You can cut that out of there and put something else in it if it bothers you, but I don't think it'll bother you, uh, personally myself, but, um, yeah, that is, so whenever you see that TF2 stuff, don't be like, don't worry. As long as it's the Mojave, it's going to work on the TF3 body. You're not going to have to stress about that. That's not going to cause you any problems in the long run. Uh, you're good to go. And if you have any questions, you can get a hold of me. Uh, I would highly recommend doing YouTube search. Um, I would get on YouTube and watch as many. Uh, there's not a whole lot of TF3 stuff. because There's a few of us. Um, Sir Chirps a lot. Go to his channel. I will post a link for his channel so you can find it, bro. Uh, Sir Chirps a lot is a big fan of the TF3 as well. Um... There's not a whole lot of people, I don't, I mean, R, I think RC Jono might have some TF3 stuff on his, I can't, I, I'm not sure. Uh, it, the most of it you find for the TF2 is going to transfer over into your basic variant of the TF3, because it's not like they're night and day, worlds apart different, really. Uh, it's just, you know, this is just a little bit different of a setup with a with a better weight distribution, that's all it is. And I'm talking stock out of the box. I'm not talking about highly modified TF2 versus, a t um, you know, stock TF3. I'm talking about taking these two trucks out of the box. So, uh, I can help I can help you out and I will help you out. And any of the TF3 guys, I will help you out. If you need help with the Trill Finder 3, I will help you out to the best of my knowledge that I can. If you have questions on it. Because I, I completely support the truck still. I mean, I, st I have... Oh, my light went out. I think it got hot. You know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, seven TF2 platform trucks here now. Uh, one, two, three is a long wheelbase. The Blazer, uh, and then the short wheelbase YJ that I got back that I'm going to be starting on pretty soon is over here on my lift. Uh, you know, and I, I still take this truck over any of these all day long. Uh, I do love this long wheelbase. It performs really well, but I still, I still love this truck. Um, and people can crack jokes and make fun. Don't make a shit a bit of difference to me. Uh, just makes you the asshole, not me. So let's see here. From I think that pretty much covers everything, man. I, I hopefully this video helps you out. Sorry for the language. Might not want to let the, your son watch this video. I'll put a disclaimer at the beginning of it. Uh, just because I was just a little aggravated seeing the dumbassery and shit that I see in some of the groups. It's just ridiculous. It's childish. Um, so anyways, I think that'll do it. Uh, I will send you this in a link. And like I said, anybody else that wants to check out Steven's 304RC in the video, uh, in his uh, YouTube channel. And then, like I said, check out Sir Chirps a lot, uh, here on YouTube as well. He's got some cool scale stuff. He's a cool dude. I talk to him from time to time. Uh, I talked to Jose Canseca. I will put a link for his videos in this one as well uh, because he is subscribed to your channel. Um, and he's a super great guy and he's into the scale stuff and he can help. And he, I think he'd be willing to help you out if you have questions. He doesn't really do the TF3, uh, he doesn't shit on it. Uh, like everybody else does, but uh, he does do the TF3, but he has a lot of experience and with scale stuff, and he's helped me out, and I thank him a lot for that as well. I, th you got to learn. Just don't turn to them stupid Facebook groups and expect those guys to be willing, you know, to help you out without cracking jokes and being a jackassery. Uh, you know, you're better to do the research on your own and go to YouTube and watch YouTube videos and just watch and take your time and learn. That's the best advice I can give you. Facebook's okay. Some of the groups are okay. 
But to deal with the stupid crap that you have to deal with, in my opinion, I just personally don't feel that it's worth it. Uh, that's me. Um, you know, that's just how I am. Uh, because, you know, you got to be a halfway decent person to people. Uh, a little bit of kindness can go a long way in a shitty world that we live in now. So, with that being said, as always, upbeat and happy from RC Dungeon. Peace.